Hello everyone. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the concept of the philosopher king and how this pertains to certain government structures. I'm going to ask and answer some fundamental questions that we must consider when we're talking about the role and rule of government and its legitimacy. But before we do that, I have to introduce the concept for those who are not aware, and I'd go over a couple of analogies that really fully explain this concept. So according to Plato, a philosopher king is a ruler who possesses both a love of knowledge as well as intelligence, reliability, and a willingness to live a simple life. Such are the rulers of his utopian city, Callipolis. For such a community to ever come into being, quote, philosophers must become kings, or those now called kings must genuinely and adequately philosophize, end quote. And this comes from his book, The Republic. And in book six of The Republic, Plato defines a philosopher firstly as its eponymous occupation, wisdom lover. He then distinguishes between one who loves true knowledge, as opposed to mere experience or education, by saying that the philosopher is the only person who has access to ideas, the archetypal entities that exist behind all representations of the form, such as beauty itself as opposed to any one particular instance of beauty. It is next, and in support of the idea that philosophers are the best rulers that Plato fashions the ship of state metaphor, one of his most often cited ideas, along with his allegory of the cave. A, quote, true pilot must of necessity pay attention to the seasons, the heavens, the stars, the winds, and everything proper to the craft if he is really to rule a ship. Now, the ship of state argument or metaphor is very interesting, so let's cover that just a little bit. Now, the ship of state likens the governance of a city-state to the command of a naval vessel and ultimately argues that the only men fit to be captain of this ship are philosopher kings. These are benevolent men with absolute power who have access to the form of the good. Plato establishes this comparison by saying that God was one of the best models of describing the steering of a ship as just like any other craft or profession, in particular that of a statesman. He then runs the metaphor in reference to a particular type of government, democracy. Plato's democracy is not the modern notion of a mix of democracy and republicanism, but rather direct democracy by way of a pure majority rule. Plato's Socrates compares the population at large to a strong but nearsighted shipowner whose knowledge of seafaring is lacking. The quarreling sailors are demagogues and politicians, and the ship's navigator, a stargazer, is the philosopher. The sailors flatter themselves with claims to knowledge of sailing, though they know nothing of navigation, and are constantly vying with one another for the approval of the shipowner, so to captain the ship, going so far as to stupefy the shipowner with drugs and wine. Meanwhile, they dismiss the navigator as a useless stargazer, though he's the only one with the adequate knowledge to direct the ship's course. Some more modern analogies that you might use to describe this philosophy, you could call it, would be the ownership of business through a CEO or the coach or leader of a sports team. Businesses are best suited when their chief executive officer or even their board of directors are all made up of very knowledgeable persons whose skills in management or policy setting, or perhaps a technical knowledge of the particular field, are best suited for driving the business forward. At the end of the day, these people are setting the corporation forward, setting the business in motion, managing day-to-day -day operations, and keeping the ship in order. When you think of a sports team, a coach must be able to lead, but it must also have the wisdom or knowledge of the sport at hand in order to guide the players to a better outcome, must be able to train them properly in order to see results in their competition in the sports. But enough with the analogies, let's go over some fundamental questions you must ask yourself when you're deciding exactly what the role of the state is and who is going to be governing. The first question is, is the usage of force in a geographic area legitimate? And this is the libertarian question. If you're going to establish a state, you must understand the legitimacy of said state. Now, I argue that the legitimacy of the state comes from the understanding of collective force and the understanding of the human condition in which states are a natural extension of people's collective identities and that while the abolition of the state, the tyranny of the state or the tyranny of the majority might be something to strive for in the long term, this is a question to be had later, but is it a realistic solution to the problems that we are faced with today? and I argue that it is not. So now that we've accepted the legitimacy of a state of some kind, some more questions arise. Is the state a tool for the advancement of a certain group of people, 
or is it a parental guide for behavior? These two concepts fundamentally differentiate between the dictator and the benevolent dictator, for lack of a better term. You may think that the this question is the difference between a representative democracy or some type of autocracy, and it really is not. Because you can have autocracies and democracies or republics that strive for their own interest rather than the people's interest. It's not inherent to one ideological concept or another. Take, for example, the current situation that we see ourselves in. The state only exists to serve its interest, even though it is technically a democratic system. Fundamentally, it makes laws based around the ideals of the lawmakers and their lobbyists, rather than the actual will of the people or the consciousness of the people beneath them. Now, we also run into the issue of too many people trying to put their hands into the soup, or the analogy of too many chefs in the kitchen will spoil a broth. Now, I take the position of the state being a tool for the advancement of a certain group of people, and in particular, this group of people fall along ethnic or racial lines. While I am in favor of a single state solution or some sort of autocracy, I am not in favor of a state that is not held accountable for its actions by the people that it is supposed to be ruling over, or essentially guiding as in a ship. Mutiny against a corrupt captain is an absolute right of these groups of people, and this goes back to the concept of collective power rather than individual power. But let's move on. Number three, who is allowed to govern through the force of the state, and how is this decided? And 3a, a little caveat here, what is the exact form of the state? And this is essentially where the concept of the philosopher king really begins to take form. And that we want a leader, whether it's in a democratic system or an autocratic system, that is fit for the job, is fit to rule. We want to maximize the capability of the person who is in control of the usage of force in an area. This is also where I take the fundamental idea that democracy does not maximize the capability of the leadership of the state and is essentially faulty in its belief systems. Or you could say faulty in its structure, how the government is essentially structured. Within democracy, and in particular Western style, modern democracies, leaders are not held to very high standards. What we've come to understand is that these politicians, these career politicians, a popularity contest with the masses of people who are voting beneath them. It is simply a big game show to see who can win the most votes. Your The quality of your character or your actual ideas, wisdom, virtue, none of these things are really or rarely taken into account when selecting a leader. It is also within the benefit of the leader to lie as much as possible in order to garner as many votes from as many different people as possible. We see this consistently amongst both sides of the political spectrum in democracies. They are willing to lie or save face in any way, shape, or form in order to garner votes. Their actual positions, their virtues, their values, their principles do not explicitly matter when they are forming their political groups. What does matter is that they appeal to the most people with the biggest votes or the biggest voting block in order to attain power, and then they can do essentially whatever they want to when they're in power, depending on the checks and balances that particular state has when it comes to executive power. Now, for me to answer this particular question, we must move on to the other questions to get a full understanding of the bigger picture in play here. So number four is, do you value representative control of legislation in the state? Or in other words, democracy. And I fundamentally reject this concept of overrepresentation, which leads to a multitude of issues such as overarching bureaucracy. Nothing ever gets done. It's essentially if you try to run a ship or a corporation with everyone having equal representation in decision making, nothing will ever get done, so on and so forth. But a caveat to this. 4a. Are there restrictions on this representation? And I would say that the best possible argument you can have for the instituting of a democracy is to restrict certain votes to certain people, those who have a vested interest in maintaining the state in a certain way, typically people of a certain intelligence or skill level, those who pay into the taxes, and those who must go off and fight in the army if you're going to have a draft. Universal suffrage is a fundamentally flawed concept as we have seen time and time again in these Western liberal democracies. 
And question five is, do you value wisdom, knowledge, character, morals, intelligence, and virtue in a leader, or is the value in a leader simply their ideology or ideas? When it comes time to selecting a leader, you must take all of these factors into account. And we have fundamentally not been doing this very well in the past in these liberal Western democracies. Those who get elected into positions of power within the two-party state in the United States simply have to toe the party line hard enough. It does not actually matter what their wisdom, knowledge, virtues, intelligence, or morals actually are, so long as they are the best spokesperson that will toe the party line in a specific direction. And a lot of this is influenced by corporate donations and the accumulation of money. And fundamentally, I think the state needs to be run by a person that possesses all of these qualities and is capable of leading, of inspiring its people, someone who is capable of respecting the power that is trusted within him, and also someone who is capable of selecting the next leader. This is a similar concept in the realm of monarchism. Although I differ in some aspects as to the absolutism of monarchies, I think that once you have a leader in place who is competent and has proven to be able to lead the people in the appropriate direction, that it should be up to him to choose his successor in some way, shape, or form. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, through family, but it should be based on the qualities of the leader itself. So if I'm going to select my predecessor, I'm going to do the best possible job, run through as many of the best candidates as I possibly can, because this not only reflects my character, my virtue, my morals, but I understand and respect the people who are beneath me that I am in charge of, essentially. And in conclusion, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the idea of a philosopher king and the right or legitimacy of the state and the possibilities, uh, pros and cons, you could say, of an autocratic system, a one-party solution, a dictatorship, if you'd like to call it that, versus the liberal democracies that we live under today. So let me know in the comments down below. If you'd like to come on the live stream show for next week, please contact me. Uh, you can find me on Discord. Links will be in the channel banner. Thanks for watching.